Hi, it's me, Exie. This is Exie's Book Nook, and welcome to my Priory of the Orange Tree reading vlog. I have wanted to read this book for so long, and I've kept putting it off because it is so big. It was recently in my Intimidating Books tag, and I talked about wanting to read this, but just being intimidated by the sheer size of it, and I decided to finally cave and just do it and do a reading vlog. So many of my friends absolutely love this book and have really enjoyed it, so I want to give it a try. I know this is about a Priory, and an orange tree, and it has dragons, and it's sapphic apparently, which, you know, that's all positive, that's all sounding good. So I'm very excited to get into this. Now this will be a spoiler-filled video. I want to be very clear about that. I will be talking about what is happening, what I am currently thinking, what I think will happen, I will be speculating, uh, all kinds of stuff. So if you have not read this book, or if you care about spoilers for this book, I recommend you don't watch ahead, because I will be spoiling everything basically, including the ending. So uh, I do want to say that I have quite a busy schedule up ahead. I have a lot of tennis to watch, like Wimbledon mainly. Also definitely not recording this after I've already read the book and I've already recorded the entire video, but I watch a lot of Wimbledon and I talk about like tennis a, quite a bit in this actually, and Formula One. So sure. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let's get right into it, shall we? This feels weird. I haven't recorded a reading vlog in so long, just sitting here recording, holding my camera, having my arm get tired while holding the camera, or my phone, I guess. But um, I have started The Priory of the Orange Tree, I've read the first two chapters, and I am confused. That That's honestly it. I don't mind the writing style whatsoever, the prose is easy to understand. It's just the start of any epic fantasy, there are so many place names, so many like character names and concepts that are only within this world, unique to this world, so <laughs> it's a little bit hard to grasp for now, but I... I'm not disliking it, the prose isn't putting me off at all, and I definitely want to read more today. Um, I was supposed to have the full day free, but I'm currently moderating our forum, or my works forum, because somebody else couldn't make their shift, so I took over, which is fine, but I was planning on having a full free day. But anyway, I'm almost done, um, and after that, basically from 7pm to whenever I go to sleep, 1, 2am maybe, I have nothing else to do besides read, and I'm gonna do that. Uh, the tennis match is almost over, that's the second one today, both semifinals will be over, so I also don't have any more tennis to watch, so really, I'm just gonna have hours and hours of reading time today, and I can use it, and I'm very much excited to continue this, because as I said, the writing feels very smooth, it feels very much, um, it's hard to put a word on it, but like, it's accessible, that's I guess the best way I can describe it, so super excited to continue this. It is currently a little bit past 9pm, and I have read a little bit over 100 pages so far. I have started to familiarize myself with the world. I'm starting to understand like when there are mentions of places and stuff, I know where on the map they are now and which countries they are. I'm starting to get the terms that are being used and it's starting to get interesting. I'm starting to get into it. I haven't been fully invested in the characters yet, um, but right now the story is split up into two storylines. You have the storyline going on in the West, and in the East, and I will say I'm a lot more interested in the storyline that's happening in the East, it seems to be more of like a training for the Dragon Riders, and that just sounds so incredibly cool, but we're not getting any of that right now, like it keeps going back to West and West and West, I think I just had three chapters in a row in the West, and we finally went to the East, but we went to different characters for just like three pages, and now we're back to the West. And it's like the West is a lot of like political intrigue, and a lot of like, oh, who is this queen going to marry? Um, and a lot of this of these characters being indoctrinated into this religion, and it is interesting, but I want to see more dragons, okay? I want to see more dragon riding training, and all of that, and like this contest that they talked about. That's what I'm interested in, that's what I want to read right now. Overall, I can't say that I'm absolutely loving the characters yet, but there's no character I'm like, eh, I don't like them. So, it's solid. That's, that's all I can say for now. I don't really have any super positive thoughts, I don't really have any super negative thoughts, so it's very much a middle-of-the-road fantasy, but for only being 100 pages in out of 800, there's a lot to go. I am now 140 pages in. It's about an hour after I recorded the last clip. I'm definitely reading this a lot slower than I usually would, and most of that is because I don't have an audiobook, so apologies for me butchering the names. Because, as I said, I don't have an audiobook, so I have no idea how I'm supposed to pronounce them. But I am starting to get really interested in Eid, Eid, whatever her name is, story. Um, I like the political intrigue that is happening over there. I just, I don't really care about any of the other characters there. The two noblemen whose names I've already forgotten, which is bad. Like, Loth and his companion. I don't care about their storyline whatsoever. I think that's the most boring one to me right now. And then in the East, which is still my favorite, we have the whole training and the water trials right now. Apparently they skipped over quite a bit of the water trials, which I'm not happy about. I mean, like, we got a little bit of a 
a summary, I guess, of what happened, but I would have liked to see a little bit more in depth because I love things like that. I love trials and competitions and I'm a huge sucker for those, even in real life. I mean, I'm watching Wimbledon. I've watched all of it. And before this, I really didn't know much about tennis and now I'm invested. So that's just my personality. When it comes to a trial or when it comes to a tournament, I am a sucker for it. It doesn't matter what kind of tournament it is, but hopefully we'll get a little bit more of that now. And then there's also the whole storyline with Nicholas, Nicholas, whatever his name is, the alchemist dude, who is, um, he was just arrested for hiding a, an outsider. I'm sorry, my cat is trying to get under my leg. I don't know what she's trying to do, actually. But um, he was just arrested, or when I say arrested, I mean beaten to a fucking pulp, basically, for hiding an outsider who came there, who is also somewhat connected to Eat. story on the other side. So, like, there are connections between everything. Um, and that storyline is kind of interesting to me as well. I would like to see where that is going, what he was trying to work on. Well, it's like this elixir of life, I guess. But what else? And like why he is there exactly and everything that's going on on that side. Because for him to be a POV character, that must be something important going on there. And I'm curious to see that. But I want to see more dragon riding. I want to see more training on that side. I am actually the most interested in that. But so far, the political intrigue is interesting. So I'm going to go back to reading. Um, and I will maybe check in with you again tonight. I mean, I hope to read for another two hours at least. So normally with an audiobook, that could easily be like 150 pages. Tonight, it's going to be like 70 maybe. Good morning. It is Friday the 8th of July, I think. Um, last night, I read actually like another 50 to 60 pages before I went to sleep, but I was too tired to do an update. So I'm going to do that now. I am about 200 pages into the book and I'm enjoying it a lot more than I was yesterday. I'm finally really getting into it. Something I've realized is that there has been so much information on the world building and on just like the story and the history in these 200 pages, but it doesn't feel info dumpy whatsoever. Uh, it's all come up very naturally through like characters and that is a skill as an author to be able to do that. I mean, I've read fantasy books that are 800 pages long that have that like this amount of world building in the entirety of those 800 pages but here it's in 200 it's like it feels like i've read more than 200 pages just because of the amount of information but not in a bad way just so much is contained within this and that's just a skill absolutely something that's also necessary when you're writing a standalone epic fantasy because you don't have three or five or ten or however many books to really get all that information out there so absolute like props to Samantha Shannon this is really really good like the writing is really solid um as for the characters I am a little bit disappointed in Tane's storyline she's currently in the capital in Gnora I believe in the Seiki region I'm definitely butchering these names I apologize for that but I wanted to see more of those trials and they were really glossed over they're done now she's basically won her final trial which was a duel uh, and she's performed well in all the other ones, so she's probably going to become a dragon rider, which I think is where the story is going. But I just I wanted to see a little bit more in depth on that, a little bit more of character development. It spent so much time in the West, and it's really not spent as much time in the East, which is the storyline I'm more interested in at the moment. Nicholas, Nicholas, Doctor Rose, he's also in the capital right now in Ganora. He's been traveled or transported there basically because he can't stay in well, what was essentially a prison, um, and he is now cooperating with the authorities, and they're basically like throwing Tane under the bus, or Tane, or however you want to pronounce her name, um, because they saw her, and he's like, hey, you need to just, like, tell them who you saw, and yeah, so that's gonna go uh, and become very messy, because she's just been accepted into the Dragon Riders, and she just went through the trials, and now she's probably gonna get fucked over by that. Then, meanwhile, in the West, we have Loth and Kid storyline, and I can't say I care much about them. They're in the Iskali Dragon Kingdom now, or the Dragon Kingdom of Iskali, or whatever it is called, and they're in the capital city there, and they just met with um, this pr princess there, basically, who was ruling, and they had a secret meeting, or Loth had a, a secret meeting with her, and she told him, like, hey, I'm not doing this, like, I don't want to do this, uh, we are being forced to do this by one of these dragons that has been, or, like, wyverns, the, the big five, the western five, or whatever they're called, the right hand of the big bad evil, and I need your help, you need to help me, and that was basically where that storyline ended for now. And then we have Eod, or Eid, or, who's still in Ascalon, who's still just doing political intrigue. She's a witch. We've learned a little bit more about the Priory, which, you know, it's the title of the book. Um, but she has chosen to remain here because she wants to keep protecting the Queen. She doesn't want to go back home yet, even though she has the opportunity to go back home. Overall, I still like the Eastern storyline the most, and I want to know more about the Eastern storyline. Like, Nick Clay's story is starting to interest me a little bit more with his, like, alchemy and him being a doctor... 
and then Tane's storyline is just interesting now, especially now that the trials are over and she can actually train and maybe bond with like a dragon. That sounds fucking cool. I like dragons, okay? Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna keep reading today. Um, my plans for today were to watch both semi-finals for the men in Wimbledon and then watch Formula 1 qualification. However, Nadal announced that he is not playing his semi-final today because of his injury. So there's only one semi-final, which means there's a lot more time for me to read. Um, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna go get to some reading now. I think it's an hour before the first semi-final starts. Well, the only one I guess today. And I'll probably check back in in like another hundred pages or when I have a lot of thoughts. I'm downstairs in my living room and I'm just watching the formula and I'm watching tennis at the same time and trying to do some reading. And Kit just died. Like, I did not expect that. They were just leaving on their quest, just going through a tunnel out of the palace and a quake hit and Kit is dead. I was like just starting to ship them, like genuinely thinking like, oh, this is going to become a relationship between these two, and now he's... What? That, like, it honestly came out of nowhere, and I mean, I kind of like deaths like that, but I haven't really been able to get attached to it, so I'm mainly confused um, that it was just unexpected. It's not like I'm super sad about his dad. Dad? It's not that I'm super sad about his death, but, you know, it was unexpected. Also, something I wanted to mention that I forgot earlier is in the storyline with Eid, where she's protecting the queen from these assassination attempts, uh, and she's kind of figured that they're not actually assassination attempts because they're so bad and obvious, and it's almost like they want to be found. So she thinks it's the Nighthawk basically trying to scare the queen into um, marrying and listening to him so she can produce an heir. And she's like, what would he do? Because he's not going to be able to have power blah blah blah, why does he want her to marry so badly? And for me it seems really obvious. He wants her to marry, he wants her to get an heir, so the bloodline is still secured, and then he's probably gonna actually kill her off, so he, because the child will be like, what, a baby, like literally not even a year old at that point, and a one year old cannot rule. So he's gonna step in and basically take over for like 17 years, and by that time he has way more than enough time to establish his power, to establish his hold. Even if he can't stay in power, he will still just have the kid in his pocket, because he can be there the entire time she grows up. And for me, it's really obvious that that's the plan. But for some reason, Eid hasn't figured that out yet. And I'm like, I thought that was pretty obvious. Or am I just completely wrong here? It is 9pm. I am done with everything I needed to do today. I've watched all the tenants. I've watched the Formula One. I've eaten dinner. I've done all the little tasks I needed to do. And I can spend the next few hours reading once again. I've actually already finished 125 pages today. I'm at uh, page 324 right now. So my goal of finishing this book by Tuesday is actually looking very, very likely. If I keep reading at this pace, I can finish it by Sunday, which is going to be fantastic. Finishing this book in four days, that's insane. Um, but I wanted to update you because a lot has happened. I feel like it's starting to really move now. Um, basically... Sabron was attacked, the queen, when she was out in the city, which was the first time she did that in like 16 years or something. And Ulbricht had um, convinced her to do that. And now Ulbricht is dead. I hope I pronounced that name right, basically. But uh, Troid, Troid, I don't know how to pronounce her name. It's a really weird name because it's partially Dutch. Because it's like Troid a Zeder. And Zeder literally means Sidor in Dutch. But she orchestrated this attack, or at least part of the attack. I, I don't think she orchestrated the entire attack with like the doomsayers and like the people who were shipping the big, the big bad. But there was one of the guards who basically led them away to an abandoned place. And I think that part was orchestrated by her because she wanted to convince Sabron that she had a plan or that she was right. But now her lover is dead. And I do think like, even though it was an arranged marriage, I do think they genuinely liked each other. So that's not gonna go well. And that's where that storyline left off. Meanwhile, Nicholas is in the capital and he has recognized Tane and he's being like, hey, you're going to help me. You're going to procure these things for me that I usually cannot get, like a dragon skill and dragon blood, or I'm going to turn you in. But um, yeah, that didn't really turn out as expected because the two people that she cares about the most, or at least like Susa, the one she cares about the most, and Sulyard are already dead, even though she had told her dragon everything. And her dragon is like, you didn't do anything wrong. You're actually like doing the right thing. I'll get them for you and we'll go to the governor and you'll get to tell your story because dragons there are seen as these godlike beings. So with a dragon on her side, she would have been able to do like to basically tell her story and what she thinks and what she believes. Um and they would have given Sulyard his his like they would have absolutely given Sulyard his uh audience that he wanted and that he even came there for. But that didn't happen because they're both killed 
Tane was pulled into the jailhouse to watch the execution, which is like fucking horrible. Getting seeing one of your best friends executed, who I also think was like more than just a friend. If I'm reading it right, I, I genuinely think she was a little bit more than just a friend. And now the dragon has also been captured by pirates and they're harvesting the dragon for parts. And Nicholas was on the beach as that happened and he's also being captured by the pirates. So that is not going well. Like everything is going to shit. And on the other side, Loth has uh, reached Erser, the country that he was going to travel for. Now, I thought it was pre that they were pretending that this Jassar guy was the emissary from the king and queen. But it seems that people do genuinely know who he is and where he is and like where he lives. So that part of him being an emissary seems to be genuine. But I think he also has like a double allegiance to the orange tree. Um, that's what I think now. I thought he was just like completely not from that region and he was pretending all this time. But that probably would have been too hard. So this makes a little bit more sense, but he has just arrived there and he's staying there and then he was um, hit in his sleep and he's been taken and he's unconscious now. So everything is going to shit. Every single character is in danger right now or is like in a bad situation. None of the plans are going according to plan. And um, yeah, I'm going to keep reading because it's getting really interesting. And I would like to reach page 400 today, which is another 80 pages or 75. I can easily do that. I, I should absolutely be able to do that. Hello there, it's once again a new day, it is currently Saturday, it is 2.30ish p.m., I don't know the exact time. Anyway, tennis is starting in 30 minutes, Formula 1 sprint race is starting in an hour and 30 minutes, I believe, or 2 hours and 30 minutes, one of those, I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, I did end up reading up to page 400 last night, I finished part 2, yeah, part 2, halfway through the book there are 6 parts, but the first two are significantly longer, and oh my god, so much happened. Um, I want to say though that I'm starting to like a lot of the storylines a lot more. I still think the writing is really good, but unfortunately I haven't fully gravitated towards one of the characters, um, which I'm, like, like, it's a little bit unfortunate. I don't, I can't say that I absolutely love any of the characters or that I'm really, like, invested in them, which I was hoping to have happened by now. Like, I understood in the first hundred pages that it hadn't happened yet, but it's been 400 now. But either way, what has gone on? Eid has been exiled from court or basically like she was going to get murdered most likely um because somebody saw her sleeping with the queen and now she's going back home and it's going to become like a long distance pining kind of situation which i'm um, honestly i can i can get behind that um but she's back at the priory of the orange tree she's been like she gets to eat the fruit again and she gets to like restore her powers um meanwhile there have been more mentions of the cup bearer and I still don't know who the cupbearer is. And I don't really know if that I can, like, give you a name right now. Like, I don't have a theory as to who the cupbearer is. I don't know if it's going to be a new character that hasn't been introduced yet. Or if it is a character that has been introduced. Like, I genuinely cannot tell you. Um, then with Troid, Truid, whatever her name is, she is apparently only 17. I thought she was, like, older. Like, maybe, like, 19, 20-ish. Uh, but no, she's 17 and she's most likely going to be executed for her crime. Even though I do... 100,000% think she's right. I think her interpretation of those tablets, of that text, is 100% right. I think she has it, like, she understands what's going to happen. I understand what she was trying to do, but she's absolutely, like, fucked up any chance of anyone ever listening to her by, like, murdering Albrecht. Like, that, I know it wasn't her intention, but because of that, nobody's ever going to listen to her, like, ever again. Meanwhile, on the other side, in the east, Nicholas is now on a ship with pirates. Apparently, like, he's on their flagship and his pirate queen has 40,000 pirates under her. Lots of all. Uh, and he's now their master surgeon. And he's like, I can do that. Even though he's an anatomist and not actually a surgeon. So he's going to try. Um, and apparently he carried this, like, thing with him. Like, there's this small part of a larger text that his, like, ex-lover, Janart who has unfortunately died, like, died holding that in his hand, um, and he gave it to him, and be like, hey, figure out what this needs to be. But apparently, it should never have been taken back to the East, and now this pirate queen, who has the rest of the text, has the entirety. So that's gonna be interesting. I do think he's going to escape this situation with the dragon, because the dragon is captured here on this desk, and they're going to harvest the dragon um, for parts. I think Nicholas is going to escape with the dragon, and then they're gonna go to T Tane, who has been exiled to... Fetter Island, I believe it is called, where she's going to be a scholar. And I'm just going to be honest, to me, a life of being a scholar on this island that seems very beautiful in the way it's been described 
sounds a lot better than a, like a life as a warrior. Like sign me up for a life as a scholar where I can just read and do research all day. Like I would fucking love that. Like I'm so down for that. Um, but I'm very curious to see what that storyline is going to be. I definitely think the dragon is going to escape. Going to go back to Tane. They're going to like she seems to believe. Nicholas seems to believe now. Uh, on the other side, Eat seems to believe what Truid has said. And I feel like these characters are slowly going to come together in some way. And yeah, I think that's really what's going on right now. As I said, today is quite a busy day because it is in a final for tennis. And on top of that, there is a Formula 1 sprint race. And then tonight from 9 to 11 p.m., I have to moderate my works forum. So I'm going to be working for two hours. It's not a long time, two hours, but that means I'm not going to be able to read for those two hours. So my goal for today would be to read 150 pages, so to get to page 550, which I think is a reasonable goal. And then tomorrow I have an even busier day, so yeah. Anyway, I just, I'm, I'm liking it. I think the writing is absolutely solid in this book. Like, it is really, really well written. Um, but I mainly rate based on enjoyment and not on writing style and just, like, story crafting. So I hope I do, like, I, I hope something happened that makes me a little bit more sympathetic with the characters I guess or makes me like them a little bit more because right now this book is almost like a 3.5 star I mean it's unfair to say that halfway through the book because usually the second half of a book is where most of the like big shit starts happening but still a three and a half star and I don't see it going down from that is what I can say I only see it going up from that so anyway I'm gonna go back to reading the tennis match is starting but I wanted to do a real quick update I've only read like 20 pages since the last one but a lot happened. Basically, Eid found or opened this box that was being carried to them at, with her own blood. And she found a key, which was a key to the mother's tomb, where she found a jewel. Now, previously, two jewels were mentioned by one of the dragons in the east, like Atane's dragon. That these two jewels were used to bind the uh, the big bad. I keep forgetting his name. I keep forgetting his name, but his name is the nameless one. So, <laughs> I mean, that kind of makes sense. But anyway, these two jewels were used to bind him for a thousand years. And these two jewels were also able to give the Eastern Dragons a lot more power and make them a lot stronger. But now they have found one of the jewels and it is bound to eat now. Um, but there was supposed to be a star chart here, which is gone and lost. Now, I'm pretty sure that is the star chart that Nicholas now has. Or at least the Pirate Queen now has. And Nicholas has just been tossed to, like, the cipher. Pretty sure that's the case. So those two characters are going to be closely related now and closely connected. Um... That, like, I really like that. This is a really solid twist. I'm very excited to keep reading, but tennis is starting, so I'm going to watch tennis first now in Formula 1, so it's going to be a while before I continue reading, but that, that was a really solid chapter and really got me hooked. Eid is with the Witch of the Woods right now, and she's learning about the different magic systems, basically, about how the, like, they have access to Sidon through the orange tree, and she mentions that there are three trees, the Hawthorn, the orange, and the mulberry tree. So what I thought originally as like the star map leading to the orange tree is in fact not true. It is in fact a different tree. So that makes my theory uh, incorrect. Also, Troid's theory, Troid, Troid, I still don't know how to pronounce that name, I'm sorry, um, isn't entirely accurate, but it has put Eid on the right path to be able to crack like what the tablets and what the text actually said. Um, and it has made her like realize that this other part of magic like her her magic comes from the ground from the tree the other magic comes from the stars from like the comet just like the eastern dragons so that's interesting uh, i'm just trying to read in between watching tennis and these chapters are getting more and more interesting it is 6 p.m formula one is done tennis is done i've eaten dinner and i have three hours left until i need to work and i can just spend the next three hours reading i've already read almost 80 pages today which is pretty close to my goal, actually. So, you know, I mean, my, halfway through my goal. But in three hours, I should be able to reach that pretty easily. I'm just really happy. I didn't think hitting 150 pages was going to be easy. But it probably is going to be easy. Anyway, not a lot has happened since I last updated you. I think the only thing that really happened is that I continued reading that chapter that I talked about. And that lot, and that Eden and Loth have been, like, reunited. Or at least they've seen each other. And the next chapter is, like, really the reunion. So... That's going to be interesting. I'm curious to see how he's going to react because Loth is very much like, this religion is fake, blah, blah, blah. And he's probably going to try to free her or something. I don't know. Okay, another quick update. I'm not even wearing my glasses, so I can't even see my camera here. But um, the opposite of Sidon, like the magic of the tree and of the earth, is Sterren, which is the magic of the stars. Funnily enough, Sterren is also the Dutch word for stars. So I think that's literally where she took her inspiration from. 
Um, but Eat has decided to leave the Priory of the Orange Tree against her orders and go back to Sabron, go back and try to find Ascalon the Sword, and she's taking Loth with her. So I like this development. I like getting to see Eat and Loth together because we've heard so much about their relationship, about their friendship, but we haven't actually seen any of it because these characters have never interacted. I'm almost done with part three. Uh, basically, we find out the location of the second jewel or pearl or whatever exactly it is. Um, it was hidden in Tane's like side. Basically, she had his wound there from when she was a child, and she was told her rib was broken, and it was just like a weird piece of bone. But no, it was actually the second jewel that was just hidden there. And it, and it has now left the priory, and she has killed the prioress because she found out that the prioress was the one who had killed her mother, and the prioress was going to kill her because only one person that like the first person that touches the jewel is the one who could wield its power and that was eat and the prioress wanted that power for herself the prioress also was completely focused on only protecting the south while eat wants to protect all of like humanity from what is happening so you know interesting uh, twists and turns i'm gonna go take a little break from reading and then i'm gonna go probably read another hour and a half before i have to work I am technically currently working, but it is very, very calm. Like, there's almost nothing going on, so I can take a little bit of a break and record this clip. It is 9.45, it's still have an hour and 15 minutes left to work. But before I started work, I reached page 530, so I'm almost at my goal for today, and I'm definitely able to hit that. Eid and Loth have made it back to Ascalon, to the capital, and they have rescued Sabran from the evil clutches of the cupbearer, because the cupbearer turns out to be... Egrain Crest. Um, I was not, like, I didn't see that coming, but Egrain hasn't really been a big, um, like, player, really. But it makes so much sense, because I thought it was the Nighthawk, because he wanted control over a new queen and whisper in her ear. Which is exactly what Egrain Crest already was to Sabron, but Sabron really became her own person and really, like, shrugged off that influence. So she was gonna just try it again with another heir, and then when she realized there was not gonna be an heir, she just wanted to lock her away and keep that a secret for as long as possible so she could grab power, uh, basically. So I had the right motivations and the exact right plot, I just had the wrong person. Um, we don't know what the Nighthawk's, like, Combs' influence is or, like, his plans are because he has vanished. I don't know if he had anything to do with it. I don't think so. I think he had his separate motivations to sending Loth away and then sending Eid away. I think he wanted to isolate her so she would listen more to him. I, I don't know. I, I think she did have, or he does have different motivations. Anyway, I'm just going to keep reading. There's a party going on if you can hear it in the background. I definitely can. Hope it's not too loud. Um, and then, I don't know, I can just like stay away for 10 minutes, take a little break and then check again because there's really nothing happening. So I can read. It is a little bit after 11 p.m. I have just finished my work and I have reached page 570 of the Priory of the Orange Tree, which is already 20 pages further than my goal for today. So I'm very happy with that. Um, I have absolutely adored the 170 pages I've read today. I feel like the first half was pretty slow. I was enjoying it. I, was, I mean, I was liking it. It wasn't bad. But the past 170 pages have just been like constant action. Everything that I'm reading, I'm very much enjoying and I keep wanting to read like I don't want to put the book down I want to keep reading and that's what I'm going to do because I'm not tired yet whatsoever and I don't have to be up before 3 p.m tomorrow I mean of course I'm going to be up earlier but I can stay up for quite a few more hours and just read um however I do want to say that I'm a little bit worried because as I said I'm at page 570 and only now are they starting to talk about going to find the sword Ascalon and going to find the other jewel that's in the east to stop the Nameless One once he rises. But in 230 pages that are left in his book, the Nameless One still has to rise. They have to go on a quest to find Ascalon. They have to go and um, find the eastern jewel, which is with Tane. So maybe Tane is going to go to them as well because she also knows what's happening or at least has more of an inclination of what is happening. So like, they may meet in the middle or whatever. But then the Nameless One still has to rise. Then battles with the Nameless One still have to happen, and then the Nameless One has to be vanquished. At least that's what I think still has to happen. And that is a lot for 230 pages. So that makes me a little bit worried about the pacing, and I hope the ending isn't rushed. That is what I'm... Like, especially because the first 400 pages were so slow. Um, not slow, slow, but it was a lot of, like, setup. It was a lot of character building. It was a lot of world building. And it was still really good, but there wasn't a whole lot happening. The plot wasn't moving forward a whole lot. So that's why I'm kind of worried now. Um, but, I mean, I do have faith in Samantha Shannon. Like, if it keeps up at this level, 
I think earlier I said I was like at a 3.5 star, but today has definitely put it up to a 4 star. And if the last 230 pages are as good as the past 170, this could easily become a 4.5. Like, I don't think it's going to hit a 5 star. Maybe if the last 230 pages are absolutely spectacular. Um, it's not going to hit a favorite because it wasn't amazing all the way through, but like it, it could definitely hit that 4.5 star still. Either way, as for tomorrow, I should just update you on that right now. All I want to do tomorrow is watch the actual Formula 1 race. I want to watch the men's final for Wimbledon. Both of those start at 3 p.m. So I'm just going to have my laptop on. I'm just going to have my TV on and I'll watch that. Then after that, I do have to work again from 9 to 11 p.m. Just as I did today. But usually I've noticed that weekend evenings are quite calm. There's not that much to do, especially on a Sunday evening as it will be tomorrow. So I should be able to read quite a bit tomorrow as well. So because I can read a little tonight, maybe I'll be able to finish it tomorrow. That would be insane, finishing this book in four days. But um, I feel like I'm rambling on. I've told you what I am currently thinking about. I I, I just want to go back to reading, so that's what I'm going to do. Oh boy, I've reached page 600, and uh, what the fuck was that chapter? Um, I had a theory halfway through the chapter, but unfortunately it's already been confirmed by the end of it, otherwise it would have looked really, really smart. Eda Margaret found Ascalon the sword, they have retrieved it, and then the Witch of the Woods came and just showed up. And Kaliba was using illusions, so Eid used her mage fire to burn away illusions, and the true form of Kaliba was revealed. And it turns out Kaliba is the queen mother, not just the previous queen, but the queen mother, like the first queen's mother. Also, she basically adopted, like, the first king, the one who went to try and slay the dragon and fill blah blah, and then she had a kid with him, which was kind of fucked up, let's be honest about that part, but that's like, that's why she looked like Sobran, that's what, like, they are her, like, she's the first queen, really. That's insane, or, like, the first queen's mother, I guess. It's That, like, really broke my brain, but, like, in her true form, she had piercing green eyes, and that immediately made a link to the white dragon, because there were only five great westerns before, and nobody had ever heard of, like, a white one with piercing green eyes, and... As soon as the green eyes were revealed, I was like, okay, she's that dragon, isn't she? And then she morphed into the dragon, and my theory was immediately confirmed before I could even voice it in this video, which is quite unfortunate. But, like, that's a cool twist. But also her whole plan, like, I get it, she wants to... Well, I mean, I, I thought she was going to be like, oh, I'll get close to him, and, like, the, the, the Great Western, like, the, the right hand of the Nameless One has accepted me, he'll bring me to him, he'll bring me to the Great Nameless One... And then I, I, I thought she was like, oh, I can fight him for you. But no, no, instead she's like, I'll just work for him and become his flesh queen and let him basically rule the world. And I'll kill Sobron in the process. And then she took Ascalon and flew off. So now they've lost the sword. And that's bad. Anyway, I'm going to go do some other stuff. I definitely want to do some more reading today, but I also want to cool down because I've been reading all day. And I'm going to do some fun stuff for myself, so watch some YouTube probably. And yeah, that, that was a twist. 200 pages left. Hi! It's Monday. I did not record whatsoever yesterday, even though I did read 140 slash 150 pages. I just, I kept sneaking in pages here and there, and then at the end of the day, I was mentally and physically exhausted, so I did read a little bit, but I didn't want to record. So I have a lot to catch you up on, and I'm just going to do that real quick, real fast. Um, Eat was supposed to go east to try and broker an alliance there with those rulers. However, she was poisoned by a red damsel, so she couldn't go. So Loth, who was originally against the plan, decided, I'm gonna go. Went on a ship. Ship was blown, of course, completely, and ended up on Feather Island instead. I found this to be a little bit of a plot convenience, to be honest, because the ship just got blown off course and just magically happened to end up on Feather Island, where the one other person with the jewel is. <sighs> it was a little bit of a plot convenience to get the characters together and to find the person with the second jewel, but okay. Then Tane decided, hey, there's a ship. I can get off this island. I can go after the other people who took my dragon, and I can get my dragon back. So she stole the ship. Loth noticed, went onto the ship himself, and basically got kidnapped by Tane. They went after the pirates to this island, I forgot the name of, um, and they rescued her dragon. They went back to the, uh, like, to the emperor of the Twelve Lakes, or whatever it's called, um, and asked for his help. He gave it very easily, and I still don't trust him. Like, I feel like there's some form of betrayal going. I just, I don't understand how it was so easily accepted. Maybe I'm just used to politicians being pieces of shit and never wanting to do anything for the good of humanity and only for their own interests, but I'm expecting something is going to go there. Um, so basically they got their alliance, or at least temporary, have a military alliance to go against the 
uh, nameless one. So Tane decided to go back, flew over the ocean, went to the Priory of the Orange Tree to retrieve an orange there to basically rise, uh, eat from the poison, because the poison was less potent than it should have been. So instead of dying, she was just in this like eternal slumber, basically. So uh, when she was at the tree, she was captured because, you know, she's a worm lover, blah, blah, blah. She was a dragon rider, so they don't like that there, but she was freed. Then Calaba, the witch of the woods, or whatever her name is exactly, um, attacked the tree, killed the prioress, and in that whole bullshit, Tane was um, able to escape. She went to Ascalon, and now she's there, and they're talking, and there's like this temporary alliance, and then now Sabran has announced to all the people that the Draconic army has come back, basically, and they're gearing up for war. And I think that's about everything that happened. I've probably missed something here and there. But yeah, that's basically the main storyline. I'm still very much enjoying it. Like, as I said, I was mentally exhausted and I didn't really want to record, but I did want to keep reading. So that's a good sign. Now, as for today, it is currently almost 6 p.m. already. Um, I'm going to go eat dinner soon and then get ready because tonight I'm going to Thor Love and Thunder with a uh, small group of friends. And then I'll be back past midnight and I'll be able to hopefully finish the book today. That, like, that's my goal. I want to finish it before I go to sleep today. I do have to be up very early tomorrow and my sleep schedule is kind of fucked. So that's going to be rough. I don't think I'm going to get a lot of sleep tonight. But, you know, I'm, I'm ready to finish this vlog up. I did actually have to edit a video today. I just realized and I have not done that because that video needs to go up tomorrow. So I guess when I get back from the movie, I do still have to edit a video first. It's okay. Anyway, I'm going to keep reading. 60 pages to go. I'm excited. I actually ended up finishing this book about four minutes before I had to leave for Thor Love and Thunder. I was cutting it very close, but I finished it and I've let my thoughts uh, settle. It's been about three days. I was very tired in the past two days and I slept a lot so I didn't get around to recording. But let me talk about those last 50 pages and just my overall thoughts about the book. Okay, so in the last 50 pages, the nameless one finally rose again. All of the um, armies basically amassed at the abyss to try and get him back down immediately once again. We had, um, and then part of the human army also went to Karskaro, the other city where like the Draconic army was staying, or the Draconic nation of Itzkalin, or something along those lines. Um, so they had split the battle up in two to try and divert some of those high westerns to the city and some to the abyss, which ended up kind of succeeding, but it was the wrong western in the wrong place. Like Firadel went to the abyss and he thought he would stay behind, but instead he sent two of the other high westerns there, so it technically worked. Um, Kaliba also showed up with the sword, and I just want to say I was disappointed in the ending. Actually quite disappointing. Basically the first 400 pages of the book are massive setup for the characters, for the world building, and I was fine with that. I actually thought it was pretty solid. But 400 to 600 is when it really started moving, and I was like, hey, I can get behind this. This is really fun. This is enjoyable. But then it continued for another 150 pages. And then the final climax happened, and it was one 20-page chapter and it was of this battle split in two, but we only get to see the POV of the Abyss. We get to see absolutely zero of the battle at Karskaro, which I was actually kind of interested in. I wanted to see a little bit more of that POV as well. Didn't get any. Um, and then it was just over. Like, the name was one Rose, and he was defeated in like five minutes. In like five pages even. It was just, it just felt so fast, and it just felt like so much build-up. So much. Like 750 pages of build-up for just like a 20-page climax, a 20-page anticlimactic, like very anticlimactic ending in battle, and it has actually left a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth, because I just, the ending really knocked my star rating down. I've ended up rating this a 3.75 star. Overall, I still very much like the characters and the world building. I think the world building is the biggest strength of this book. I didn't fully attach to any of the characters. I think my favorite has to be Nicholas, um, but we even, like, we didn't even get that much of his story, but I did like it. Um, I would have liked to see a little bit more, like, scholarly stuff out of him as an alchemist and an anatomist. We got a surprising lack of like anatomy and alchemy from him. But I also just hate how these high western and the nameless one acted. It was like they're supposed to be super smart and threatening and he rose and immediately saw this entire army around him. Why didn't you just flee? Like the humans were united in this case. If you just fled and started attacking city after city, especially when they're caught in the middle of the sea and you can fly so much faster, you could have done so much damage, right? Like am I the only one thinking that? If the nameless one just decided to up and fly away to any capital city, there wouldn't be an army to stop him. 
the humans would like you could cripple the humans so they couldn't unite against you like i just really didn't like that and i said around page like 500 that i was getting a little bit worried about the pacing because so much still had yet to happen and now i get it i mean like he rises and he's defeated in the span of five pages like i did not like that like i'm so i'm actually kind of upset about it it's it's really sad because i was really enjoying this book and just like the ending it's just so disappointing like genuinely disappointing like you could probably see that i'm genuinely disappointed about this um i don't know what else i can say like the, just every time i think about this book now it's just the ending comes into my mind i've forgotten so much of the things i actually liked about it like the building up of the characters and all of that and it's just ending and it's sad and i think this book is actually going to fall up and I'm going to combine this because I was going to say I have a very good one sentence review of Thor Love and Thunder. Fun in the moment but utterly forgettable. And I think this is fun in the moment but utterly forgettable besides the ending which will always stick in my mind as a very sore point. I'm, I'll make it slightly longer. But yeah, overall like a 3.75 is not a bad rating and it has a lot going for it. But I don't have any other words than ending. Why? Pacing. Like that ending conclusion against such a big enemy that can destroy the fucking world that has an entire army and it was just defeated. I'm gonna end the video there. I hope you enjoyed this reading vlog. I hope you will leave a like and a comment and whatever and subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next one. Bye.